Many paintings hide a composition trick you don't notice when you see it. Even when you don't know it, it still affects how your eye moves on these surfaces. After learning this technique, you will start seeing it everywhere. And more importantly, you will be able to use this in your own art to tell your stories with more visual impact. The cool thing is that not all artists, even professional ones, use this. Anyone can start implementing this technique immediately, regardless of their skill level. Even if you are a beginner, knowing this will make life much easier when dealing with a tricky visual problem. So let's level up super fast right now. The most critical design aspect of any painting is composition. All of these other elements are just tiny elements of composition. So once you have mastered this, you have mastered art itself. Now, despite what you might think, I won't be talking about edges, values or masses in this video. Those are all efficient tools for clarity. But the one thing that is not usually talked about in composition is patterns. Every painting has patterns. By patterns, I mean repetition of colors, shapes, tones and lines. Let's start from the basics and go all the way to more advanced implementation so we can actually use this technique in your own art. Look at this. Notice how each element in this illustration has its own pattern. Design choices are the only thing that holds up the piece when using a graphic style like this. There's no line art, no hours of rendering, just pure design. These wavy lines mark the foliage up here. In this style, the pattern could be almost anything. And trust me, in this illustration, I almost tried everything. However, by assigning the same treatment to all of the foliage in this piece, that makes this illustration more manageable to read. Because your eye lumps all of those similar items into the same category, once you have identified how to read one element, such as one tree like this, you have identified all of them at once. In its most basic form, seen like this, the concept might seem super simple. But even knowing this, I still had to go through many different patterns before I arrived at this one. Now the reason that I hope that you remember this is because I don't want you to feel frustrated when doing the exercises I will describe later in this video. Learning always comes with friction in the process, and that friction is a clear sign that we are improving as artists. Composition itself is a game of attention. Every pattern pulls attention towards itself, but so do edges of different patterns. Where these edges are is another tool you can use to manipulate the eye movement. And this is something that you probably don't think about when you are constructing your illustration, but now that you know this, you can start seeing these hidden lines that are also affecting the way that your viewer's gaze is moving through your illustrations. Every pattern pulls attention towards itself, but so do the edges of different patterns. Where these edges are is another tool you can use to manipulate the eye movement. Now these edges are something that you probably don't usually think about when you are constructing your illustration. But knowing this, you can use them to guide the eye, like this, to your advantage when you are telling your story. Now let's expand the concept of what a pattern is. See the way these branches spread out behind this crystal. All of them are different, but they are also the same. All patterns, no matter what they are, fall on this simple spectrum. On the left, we have monotonous repeating shapes. These patterns are accessible for the eye to breeze through. Note that I'm not saying that they are pretty or better, but they are fast shapes for our eyes. If you consider attention as a budget for your illustration, these are cheap patterns. Once you see one window of a building, you don't need to look at each one to understand what's happening here. It's a monotonous pattern, therefore it's super easy to understand. As a simple memory rule, you can just think that monotonous patterns are fast for the eyes. When you see a bunch of similar trees, your eye moves through them quickly. But once we start twisting and varying these shapes, we have reached the opposite end of this spectrum. This is rhythm. This is the best kind of sticky tar for the eye movement when you want to trap your viewer's gaze. So use these sort of patterns that have rhythm in them when you want the eye to stop 
and look at the details that you are describing there. If you have a texture that is important for the story or the mood, then you can use these sort of patterns to make people stop and pay attention. Let's see this in practice. Now you have the tools to understand my design thinking with these trees. I could make one of the tree trunks massive, and there's also the option of giving these branches more rhythm through different angles and shapes. But here, I'm deliberately clamping that variety to this limited range, because these lines are not the subject. Having repeating shapes close to each other and isolated by the top and bottom of this picture plane groups them into a pattern that doesn't dominate the composition, it merely frames it. So just like these branches, patterns don't have to be just surface textures. They can be the shape and placement of elements repeating in organized areas of your piece. Repetition is not a bad thing. You can leverage the power of repetition by breaking the pattern and bringing focus to the exception. This trick is more effective the more patience you have for organizing your shapes, lines and colors in the first place. In my work, I've often done low contrast paintings when I'm matching the mood of a film or a game I'm working on. When you're working on something more realistic, this is an absolute godsend of a technique to help visual clarity and maintain the visual impact when you don't have tools such as saturation, contrast or stylized shapes to lean on. Patterns have saved a lot of difficult to solve paintings for me when things start blending and I can't use those other elements within the art style set for the project because there might be art guidelines or an art director that has already defined a color palette for you to use. Or if I'm working on a game, there might be a limited color palette that I can use for one area because I have designed active elements to inhabit a different color space. Like for example, saturation and contrast might be used for pickups and power-ups, and those are more important to notice than like passive elements in the background. Okay, so we have covered the basics. We know how to use this in objects. Let's go to the advanced level. You can break this technique down to even the brush strokes you are using. Are your rolling hills painted with arc shapes? Why not contrast that with the way you paint the sky? You can build an entire composition where the whole visual interest is built out of these different patterns meeting and contrasting. And you can do it with just brush strokes alone. This painting started out as a completely abstract painting because it's an exercise where I'm just practicing creating patterns with brush strokes and giving them contrast to find interesting shapes and patterns. In fact, most of this painting was done upside down and only in the last phases I was just like, okay, kind of looks like a landscape, so I flipped it around. But this is one of those exercises that you can do, it's really low pressure, and it's kind of fun to do, especially when you don't have an idea what you want to be working on. So just work on your brush strokes and brush stroke grouping like this, and that's always a good use of your time. This painting also has a pattern for the main subject. This crystal was painted during one of my channel membership material live demos. If you want to see the crystal live stream, it's in my channel members content library. They are all saved there. Thank you for the members for making these free videos possible. Now let's move on to exercises. You might be wondering, this theory is all well and good, but where do I actually start? The best way to start with patterns is to make a simple illustration where they have a prominent role in the composition. I recommend leaving enough empty room in these sorts of artworks, so your patterns get to have their own personality. And if the shapes are simple enough, you can go kind of crazy with them, and that's the fun part. Remember, the patterns also take up attention, so that's what the empty space is for. Evaluate the need for the emptiness only after you have the patterns in there, and don't get scared if it looks too bland early on, before you have the patterns in place. And if at any point you are having trouble with this exercise, you can always lean on these two simple rules. One, does it read? Can I tell what it is that I'm looking at? And two, are my patterns guiding the eye where it matters? And to answer this question, all you have to do is look at your patterns and see where all the complex patterns are, where the patterns are meeting, 
and where you are placing those simple patterns that the eye can just breeze through. Those are important too, because you want your illustration to have vast areas where you don't want the attention to be stuck looking at a detail that is not important for your message. Now this might be just my personal opinion, but I think these pieces are really fun to work on. Please don't make my mistake of thinking that this is easy. Once you get into it, these composition elements become like a puzzle game to solve, and it's so satisfying when it all clicks together, and you can see that the patterns are making the objects read better, and they are grouping the elements into a symbol to read groups, and your illustration starts working because of those simple decisions. But that's only the first exercise. When you move into something more painterly, such as this one, you will have easier time seeing the opportunities for patterns to help you construct your compositions. This is not really an exercise, but something that I hope that you remember for the rest of your life. When you know these sort of techniques, you can not only learn to use them in your own art, but you can learn to enjoy art more. The next time you go into an art museum and you spot these patterns, you can kind of find another level of the paintings that you are looking at and enjoy them in a completely new way. And I think that's really cool. Knowing how to make art can help us appreciate it more. If you want a more practical guide on making illustrations like these, I have this whole tutorial dedicated just for that style. Or watch this other video. Press all of the buttons on YouTube or don't. I'm not your art dad.